Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm taking a look at the high-grade Gundam Harut from Mobile Suit Gundam 00 Awakening of the Trailblazer. I'll just mention as usual when it comes to premium Bandai kits like this one right here, this video would not have been possible without those absolutely fantastic people over at Bai. So if you're looking for some rare or premium Bandai Gunpla of your own, check out that link down there in the description. But as for this version of Gundam Harut right here, you might be wondering what is so different between this and the standard release we got 12 years ago. And for the most part, the answer is everything from the knee down. So this right here is the final battle version of Gundam Harut. So this is featuring some brand new parts made in, well, last year, 2021. And that, of course, is the lower legs, which are those giant thrusters. So of course, as usual, when it does come to a kit like this, I will specify straight away that this is a 12 year old kit with a little bit extra added. So if you were thinking video games, this would be like a game from 2010, like Amnesia or Fallout New Vegas, just with some DLC included. The core game has not changed, no graphical upgrades. It's just the same kit we saw before with some extras. Anyway, let's get right into the review. So jumping right on into the aesthetics on this kit, and like I mentioned, for the most part, this is a 2010 kit with some additional parts, which is the legs from the knees down the head, which are new for 2021. So what that means is the vast majority of what is inside of this kit is all the runners we would have seen from 2010. As far as I know, every single one of them is in here and some new parts to make the Marut mode head and the final battle version versions of the legs. This kit does have some definite hallmarks of a 2010 kit, and the main aspect would be the amount of stickers this kit comes with. There are quite a few, it is quite sticker heavy. So that does mean if you do want this kit to look perfect, there will be some level of customizing or painting involved. The stickers aren't really the worst. We've got the standard ones for the eyes as well as the head camera. We've got some green parts for the sights on the cannon's round back. We've got some circles for underneath all of the GN condensers. Once again, the clear parts in here are in colorless, so great for customizing, not looking so great out of the box. And we do have some small gray ones on the front of both of the legs. These are new parts, but they still have some color correcting stickers, but these aren't really the worst, especially when you zoom out, they're not really all that noticeable. So yeah, on the whole, this does hold up quite well. You will notice that the details on the newer section, like the legs down below the knees, these are a lot crisper and a lot easier to panel line than what you would see on the rest of the kit, which is a little bit old school. The Panel lines are a little bit more shallow and not as well molded or crisp. I did panel line this build mainly around front just so you can see the general gist of what this will look like and so the details pick up a little better on camera. And what I have attached on here is the Marut mode version of the head which does come included with this kit and this kit only if I'm not mistaken. We have a large red sticker underneath the cockpit segment. Once again, this is colorless clear. So if you want it to actually be a colorless color, it's painting time. On some of the older parts, there are some definite classic aspects. For example, up on the shoulder here, the way the orange is clipped onto the white does look a little bit on the retro side, but on the newer parts, we have some cool aspects. Like if you look at the rear of those big new legs, we do have a dual layered aspect to the plastic. So that does mean we've got gray underneath the orange, which, which really gives it a kind of heft, thickness and armored feel. Where this kit really wins out though is once it's up on a shelf because this is a big kit. It's way bigger than your average size high grade. So if you take it compared to the standard Oryx 782 high grade, well, the entry grade in this situation, this is big. Even besides something like the Nightingale, this is gonna hold up on your shelf very, very well. Also, the new legs really give it a real cool dynamic aspect. And speaking of the legs, the older legs are included in here. So if you wanted to, you could build this as the standard version. But honestly, with those big kick ass, massive thruster legs, why would you want to do that? So now jumping into the accessories and here is the high grade Gundam Harut final battle version with absolutely everything that it comes with. So first off, we've got a bit of an option when it comes to the build in this kit. That is to build the head in either the standard version or the Marut mode. Now, we will mention you cannot build both at the same time. This is an 
option. Basically one or the other. The vast majority of the head is from the standard version of the Gundam Harut. And you just use some parts which convert it into the Marut mode. So once again, you cannot build both, just one or the other. And while I'm talking about aspects that are options in this kit, it is a little bit disappointing that we are missing one of the most standard Gunpla options out there, which is some alternate hands. All we have is the standard fists in here, but if you do plan to display your Gundam Haru with its weapons all of the time, this isn't much of an issue. But if you did want some expressive options, there are none in here. Next up in here, we've got 2G and scissor bits. Now, when it comes to Gundam Harut, it does have 10, 5 in each of the canisters on the cannons round back, but in this kit, we just get the two. These are shockingly color inaccurate. They're just in orange. So if you don't paint them and use what's in the kit, that is some shiny green stickers for the blades and a little gray circular one from the side. If that wasn't enough in the lacking department. If you take a look in the instructions, it tells you to use a stand adapter that is not included in here. Stand also not included. So according to this, you will need yourself an action base four just for the adapter that is in here to have these displayed in the air. So, you know, this is a premium Bandai kit. It would have been nice to at least see some stands included. I'll also mention there is nowhere to store these on or in the mobile suit. Next up in here, we've got the pair of GN sword rifles, Harut's main weaponry. These can be used in sword mode or rifle mode in order to attach them into the hand. For sword mode, you actually have to disassemble the hand and attach it on like so, sandwich style. But when you are attaching these in rifle mode, you just flip out a handle from underneath and it can slide on into the hand like so. The grip and the ability to hold up the weapons here is pretty much perfect, but I will mention in sword mode, the hand can slip a little bit because they don't fit flush. We also have a sticker for using on the side of these so these aren't fully color accurate and we do have a colorless clear blade on both, both of which have a little bit of a hinge so these can open up like a scissors at the central part. Once again, this is a little bit on the loose side so it might want to be tightened up a little bit. So finally, I will mention this kit does come with the simple yet effective runnerless stand, which is this one right here. So the stand is included, which is very important with a kit like this, which cannot stand up on the big old thruster legs. So once again, stand included. So finally now, jumping on to the articulation and a bit of a comment as usual on the build. This is so solid and I did not expect that. I know a lot of you guys have mentioned to me before that when it actually came to awakening of the Trailblazer kits, they really did improve on them quite a bit when it comes to the structure and design compared to the Gundam 00 kits that came before. That is definitely the case. So first off, I am going to actually take off the backpack so we can take a look at the Gundam itself and we will get back to that in a second. Just in case you wanted to see a little bit more about the actual Gundam here without the backpack, in case you're thinking of some customs. Like I've mentioned multiple times, legs are new, a lot of the head is new, but a lot of what is going on here, we would have seen before. The neck in here is our usual double polycap, or should I say, double ball polycap. So what we've got here is a typical giggity 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 goo. There it is looking all the way up, all the way down. Side to side is a little bit blocked because we have those over the top. V-fin alternatives up there, but on the whole, not bad. The polycaps using the shoulders here aren't the usual shoulder polycaps, so that means this may not be as compatible way. Let's just try and find out. So we'll take a standard high-grade Gundam, a standard high-grade Gundam arm, and see if it fits in. Well, it does fit in, but it doesn't really hold, so yeah. Bandai have mixed up the polycaps in this quite a bit for the unusual design, so compatibility issues might be found here. As for the joint that pops into it here, this has a locking mechanism that just pops out like so, so you can get more out of that. So here we do have the full shoulder roll, the full 360 degree spin at a bit of an angle. There's the arm raised up all the way and yeah, it goes up all the way. The arm is attached into the bottom of the shoulder like so, full 360 spin up top. Single joint bend at the elbow, a little bit limited, but not too bad. Little elbow flap back here can flap up and out like that right there. We do have a secondary joint right here which allows the wrist to move up and down like so and then it's a standard ball joint at the wrist. As for what is going on inside the waist right here, it is just a ball joint up really high. This actually is just on a peg that goes all the way through that. So what we get with the ab crunch is just up here and it is just that little bit right there and that is it to there for the rotation. For the most part, this kit is rock solid but if anything will fall off when you're Moving this around, it will be these front skirtings. These are just polycap 
balls and sockets, so side to side, up and down. The butt flap here is on ball joints, so it can move ever so slightly like that to there. The hip joints on this kit are quite interesting because usually we like to see pegs, not ball joints. But what we have in here is a peg that's been converted into a ball joint with a poly cap. And then this little cup section that attaches on top. And this actually works out very, very well. I'm surprised. These actually give you a lot more than you'd expect. We have full rotation ride here. The kick up to the front, well, is a little blocked by those giant knees. Out to the back, we've got quite a bit. There goes the front skirt again, and that is what we get out of the splits. Again, it's not crazy, but better than what I was expecting from a kit with those sort of ball and sockets. So that right there is the knee bend. So there we go. A little hard to see because of the unusual leg design, which I love, by the way. So yeah, one more time from the side. There it is straight. There is the bend. So very, very nice. And nothing from the knee down. Not that you need it. It's just big, old, awesome looking thrusters. So back to the backpack then. We've got rotation here at a peg. A ball joint with a little bit of a locking mechanism here, which allows these to pop out, rotate, and lock back in. So simple, but effective. We also then have a flip up section up top and down bottom for the transformation. And these can move on a hinge like so. Once again, simple, but it does what you need it to. So yeah, when this is attached, these can actually rotate forward just like that. And I guess it's about time, well, to check out that transformation. So of course, the Harut here has a transformation to mobile armor mode. As usual, I'm doing this my first time on camera because it tends to help me with if anything is a little bit hard to do or anything like that. And all I can say is it's pretty simple and it is effective. First, you pull out the chest and then move it upwards. Make sure to move it up all the way or it will keep on flopping down on you. The shoulders flip up just like so, straighten out the arms, spin the arms round, close up the elbow sections to cover up the joints. It was at this point I realized that I've done what I do quite often, and that is I had the wing binder cannon sections on backwards for the entire review, so I flipped them around to the where they're meant to be. Then you just bring them around to the side, turn it around, flip up the cockpit segment, bring back the section with the missiles around back. At this point, you can't actually get the rear section folded out while it is on the stand, so it's time to take the stand off, flip this segment so it can hold onto this kit while it is in mobile armor mode, pop it back on again, and then finally you can take those GN sword rifles and attach them onto both of the cannons like so as a pair of wings. And there it is complete, and I have to say I am in love with this mobile armor mode. The new thrusters round back really give it a lot of huge arse, and that is pretty cool. The whole thing has a really nice shape, the wings look really cool, and this is very unique. Even from down below, it doesn't look obviously like a standing Gundam because the face has been covered quite well. And I have to say, I like the girth. It looks good. This is a kick-ass mobile armor mode. So when it comes to the high-grade Gundam Harut Final Battle version, once again, this is the same kit we would have seen 11 or 12 years ago. And for a kit that old, it's not too bad. The biggest down points, of course, is the color inaccuracies. There's a lot of stickers in here, and there is a lot of clear parts that would have been, well, nice to see colored versions of included with the clear ones in case you want to paint it. Also, it is a little bit of a letdown that we don't have any stands compatible with the scissor bits in here, but on the whole, besides those aspects, this holds up really well. It's strong, it's big, and for something so big, the joints hold it really well, even though they are a little bit dated. The overall posability in here is good, not great, but we do have a cool transformation to one beefy mobile armor mode. All I can say is if you've already built the High-grade Gundam Harut from a decade ago, you know exactly what you're getting now with a big pair of legs and the Marut mode head. And if you are considering getting it, I say go for it. I say it's silver tier and holds up quite well. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I'll see you next time. As always, this video and none of these videos would be possible without each and every one of you watching these videos, including those of you who are supporting me on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including... Van Fon, Orgy59061, Lawrence Seahack, Kill Me Inc., Joseph Kukluk, Joe, Gunpla UK Limited, Global Frequency Studios, Forsetti, Caleb Engelhart, and Craig Jerry.